Unlock Riches, The Amazing Secret to Index Funds Mastery, written and published by Wealthy7 Channel. The Introduction You might not be aware of this, but index funds are one of the most efficient and risk-averse ways to build wealth. In Unlock Riches, you'll learn the ropes of index investing, including the tactics used by the most successful investors. The book demystifies complex concepts and provides actionable strategies for long-term financial success. Now, wouldn't you want to know how you can use these strategies to unveil your potential for wealth creation? Part 1. Mastering Index Funds To truly access the treasure trove that index funds can offer, you need to understand and master the intricate workings of these investment tools. Index funds are a type of mutual fund or exchange-traded fund ETF with a portfolio constructed to match or track the components of a financial market index, such as the standard Poor's 500 Index SP500. They offer broad market exposure, low operating expenses and low portfolio turnover. Now, your first step to mastering index funds is to grasp the concept of a market index. It's a hypothetical portfolio of investment holdings representing a segment of the financial market. The calculation of the index value comes from the prices of the included holdings. This allows an index fund to mirror the performance of the financial market index it's tracking. Next, you must understand how the index fund's portfolio is constructed. It involves buying shares of all the securities in the index in direct proportion to their value in the market. For instance, if a company's stock makes up 2% of the index, then it would also make up 2% of the index fund's portfolio. Furthermore, you should comprehend the buy and hold strategy that index funds adopt. They follow this approach because it's designed to mirror the performance of the market index. It involves holding securities for a long period, thereby minimizing costs associated with frequent buying and selling. Harnessing the power of index investing releases numerous benefits for your financial portfolio. For starters, it's an excellent strategy for diversification. You're fundamentally buying a small piece of every company listed in the index. This means you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, lowering your risk considerably. Moreover, index investing tends to have lower costs. Traditional managed funds often come with high management fees which can eat into your returns over time. In contrast, index funds are passively managed, so they typically have lower expense ratios. This means more of your money stays invested and compounds over time. Additionally, index investing offers simplicity. You don't need to constantly monitor the market or make complicated investment decisions. Once you've invested in an index fund, it automatically tracks the performance of the underlying index. Lastly, let's not overlook the tax efficiency of index funds. They have a lower turnover compared to actively managed funds, meaning they generate fewer capital gains distributions. This could potentially save you a considerable amount in taxes over the long term. It's also worth noting that index investing is accessible to everyone, regardless of their level of investment knowledge. Many platforms offer index funds with low minimum investment amounts, making it possible for nearly anyone to get started. Part 2. Wealth Building Strategies Building on the benefits of index investing, let's explore other wealth building strategies that could potentially amplify your financial growth. A diversified investment portfolio is a cornerstone of wealth building. This means spreading your investments across different asset classes such as stocks, bonds, real estate and commodities. By doing this, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. If one asset class performs poorly, you'll likely have others that are performing well, balancing out your overall returns. Next, consider automated investing. This strategy allows you to invest a set amount of money at regular intervals automatically. It's also known as dollar cost averaging. This strategy takes the emotion out of investing, prevents you from making rash decisions based on market fluctuations, and can result in a lower average cost per share over time. Investing in yourself is another key strategy. Increasing your earning potential through further education, training or starting a side business can provide additional income streams, further bolstering your wealth. Lastly, remember the power of compound interest. The sooner you start investing, the more time your money has to grow. 
Reinvesting your returns enables you to earn interest on your interest, accelerating your wealth growth. In managing your wealth, it's vital to grasp effective money management tips to maintain and increase your assets. Understanding the principles of sound financial management can be the difference between financial mediocrity and financial prosperity. Firstly, it's important to have a clear understanding of your income and expenses. This is the fundamental step in any wealth management strategy. You need to know exactly how much money is coming in and where it's going out. Without this knowledge, it's impossible to formulate a plan to increase your wealth. Secondly, it's significant to save consistently. It's not enough to save occasionally or when you feel like it. You should be saving a set percentage of your income every month. This not only builds your wealth but also creates a safety net for unexpected expenses or emergencies. Next, consider investing your money. While saving is a great start, investing can accelerate your wealth creation. However, don't just jump into any investment. Do your research and understand the risks involved. You want your money to work for you, not against you. Lastly, always review and adjust your financial plan as necessary. Your financial situation will change over time, and so should your plan. Regularly reviewing and adjusting your plan guarantees that it remains effective and relevant. Part 3 Fund Selection Criteria Having touched on the importance of investing in your wealth management strategy, let's now turn our focus to how you can select the right funds, specifically index funds, for your portfolio. It's not enough to just decide to invest in index funds, you'll need to choose the right ones to meet your financial goals. Here's how. Firstly, consider the fund's tracking error. This is a measure of how closely the fund follows the index it's supposed to replicate. Lower tracking errors mean the fund is more likely to mirror the index, which is what you want. Next, look at the fund's expense ratio. This is the cost of managing the fund, expressed as a percentage of your investment. Lower expense ratios mean more of your money is working for you. Some index funds have expense ratios as low as 0.05%, so don't settle for high-cost funds. Thirdly, consider the fund's size. Larger funds have more assets under management, which can lead to lower costs and increased liquidity. However, very large funds may have more difficulty closely tracking their index. Diversifying your portfolio is a key step you'll want to take when investing in index funds, as it can help mitigate risk and enhance potential returns. Diversification involves spreading your investments across different asset classes, sectors and geographical regions to reduce exposure to any single area. To start, consider asset class diversification. This involves investing in a mix of assets such as stocks, bonds and cash equivalents. For example, you could invest in a stock index fund, a bond index fund, and a money market fund. This way, when one asset class is underperforming, the other may be doing well, offsetting potential losses. Sector diversification is another technique. The economy consists of various sectors such as technology, healthcare, finance and others. By investing in index funds that track different sectors, you're less exposed to the risk associated with any one sector. Lastly, geographical diversification helps protect against regional economic downturns. Invest in domestic and international index funds to spread your money across various economies. If one country's economy is struggling, another may be thriving, which could help balance your portfolio. Part 4. Risk Assessment Methods While diversification techniques serve to protect your portfolio, it's equally imperative to understand various risk assessment methods to further shield your investments from potential market volatility. You mustn't overlook the importance of gauging the risk involved in your investments, as this knowledge can greatly influence your financial decisions. One of the most common risk assessment methods is standard deviation, which measures the dispersion from an average in a set of data. A higher standard deviation indicates a higher degree of risk and volatility. You should be mindful of this, as a fund with a high standard deviation can result in considerable losses if the market swings unfavorably. Another critical method is beta, which measures the sensitivity of an investment to the movements of the market. A beta higher than 1 indicates that the investment is more volatile than the market, while a beta less than 1 means the investment is less volatile. 
understanding beta can help you choose funds that align with your risk tolerance. Value at risk VAR is also useful in risk assessment. It predicts the maximum loss that an investment could incur over a specific period at a certain level of confidence. A high VAR indicates higher risk. Lastly, the Sharper ratio measures the average return earned in excess of the risk-free rate per unit of volatility. A higher Sharper ratio is preferable, as it indicates a more desirable risk-adjusted return. Mastering these risk assessment methods can equip you with the necessary tools to make informed investment decisions, thereby paving the way for your journey to wealth creation via index funds. In the domain of index fund investing, Understanding the fundamentals of asset allocation is a powerful strategy for maximizing returns and minimizing risk. Asset allocation is the process of distributing your investments across various asset classes such as stocks, bonds and cash equivalents. It's a strategic decision you make based on your investment goals, risk tolerance and investment horizon. You can't control market fluctuations, but you can control how you allocate your assets. It's not about picking the best or right investment, it's about finding the right mix that aligns with your financial objectives and risk tolerance. For example, if you're a risk-averse investor with a long-term horizon, your portfolio might consist of a higher percentage of bonds and a lower percentage of stocks. On the other hand, if you're comfortable with higher risk and have a short-term horizon, your portfolio may tilt towards a larger percentage of stocks. Asset allocation isn't a set-it-and-forget-it approach. It requires regular review and adjustments based on changes in market conditions and your personal circumstances. The key is to maintain a disciplined approach and avoid emotional investing. Remember, it's the overall portfolio's performance that matters, not the performance of individual investments. Understanding asset allocation fundamentals allows you to build a diversified portfolio that balances risk and reward. By doing so, you're setting yourself up for index fund investing success. Part 5. Rebalancing your portfolio. To maximize your investment returns and minimize risk, it's crucial to regularly rebalance your portfolio, a process that involves realigning the proportions of your assets to maintain your desired level of asset allocation. This isn't a one-time action, but an ongoing discipline you'll need to master to effectively manage your index funds. Rebalancing is done when your portfolio's asset allocation drifts from your target due to market fluctuations. For instance, if your initial asset allocation was 60% stocks and 40% bonds and over time it shifts to 70% stocks, it's time to rebalance. You'd sell some stocks and buy more bonds to get back to your 60-40 split. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to rebalancing. You might set a specific time period, like annually or semi-annually, or you could use a threshold approach, rebalancing whenever your allocation drifts by a certain percentage. Some investors combine both strategies for a more dynamic approach. In rebalancing, it's key to take into account tax implications and transaction costs. Selling assets can trigger capital gains taxes, and frequent trades can rack up costs. Consequently, it's wise to rebalance in a tax-advantaged account like an IRA or 401k where possible, and to be mindful of fees. After mastering the art of rebalancing your portfolio, the next step in your investment journey is understanding market performance analysis. This process involves evaluating the past and present behavior of your index funds and the overall market. It's vital to your investment strategy because it can help you predict future trends enabling you to make well-informed decisions. Start by examining the historical performance of your index funds. Look at how they've performed over different time spans, both short-term and long-term. You're seeking consistent return rates, but remember, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Next, analyze the current market conditions. Are we in a bull market rising or a bear market falling? This context is essential for interpreting your fund's performance. For instance, if your funds are performing well in a bull market, that's expected. But if they're performing well in a bear market, they're truly outpacing the market. Finally, compare your index fund's performance to benchmark indices. Benchmarks like the SP500 or the FTSE100 provide a standard for comparison. 
they'll help you determine if your funds are underperforming, meeting, or exceeding market averages. Remember, market performance analysis isn't about chasing the highest returns. It's about understanding how your investments are performing and aligning your strategy with your financial goals. It's a tool to assist you in making rational, not emotional, investment decisions. Your mastery of index funds doesn't end here. Continuous learning and adaptation to market changes are the keys to successful investing. Part 6. Investment Horizon Planning Mapping out your investment horizon or the length of time you plan to invest your money plays an important role in shaping your index fund strategy. It's a vital decision point that will guide your selection of funds and impact your risk tolerance, portfolio diversification and potential returns. Consider your financial goals and the time you have to achieve them. If you're young and saving for retirement, you have a long horizon and can afford to take on more risk. You might choose index funds that track volatile markets or sectors, knowing that over time the peaks and valleys tend to smooth out, resulting in overall growth. On the other hand, if you're nearing retirement, your horizon is shorter. You'll likely want to shift towards more conservative index funds, perhaps those that track bond markets or stable industries. This can help guarantee your nest egg is protected from sudden market downturns. Your investment horizon isn't static, it shortens as you near your financial goal. It's important to periodically reassess and adjust your index fund strategy accordingly. Just as you adjust your strategy based on your investment horizon, you also need to take into account tax efficiency when selecting index funds. This is essential because taxes can greatly erode your returns, especially in the long term. In fact, tax inefficiency can often be the difference between a profitable and an unprofitable investment. First, understand that all index funds aren't created equal when it comes to tax efficiency. Some funds generate more taxable events than others due to their investment strategy. For instance, funds that frequently buy and sell securities can generate higher capital gains, which are taxable events. On the other hand, funds that follow a buy-and-hold strategy tend to generate fewer taxable events, making them more tax-efficient. Second, consider funds that specifically focus on tax efficiency. These so-called tax-managed funds often have strategies in place to minimize the tax burden. For example, they may sell securities that have declined in value to offset the gains from securities that have increased in value, a strategy known as tax loss harvesting. Third, consider the impact of your tax bracket. Remember that capital gains are taxed at different rates depending on your income. Hence, if you're in a high tax bracket, a more tax-efficient fund could provide substantial savings. Part 7. Passive versus Active Strategies Often, when deliberating on your investment strategy, you'll find yourself weighing the pros and cons of passive versus active investing. The crux of the matter lies in understanding these two strategies, their implications and most importantly, identifying which aligns better with your financial objectives. Passive investing is a long-term strategy that involves minimal buying and selling intending to mirror a market index. You'll be purchasing a wide array of stocks, bonds or other securities that make up a specific index, like the SP500. The goal is to match the overall market performance, not outperform it. It's less risky, low cost, and doesn't require constant monitoring. On the other hand, active investing involves frequent buying and selling of securities aiming to outperform the market index. It's a hands-on approach where you or your fund manager make specific investments based on research, predictions, and personal judgment. While it has the potential for higher returns, it's also riskier, more expensive due to higher transaction fees and requires ongoing attention. Although both strategies have their merits, many experts lean towards passive investing for its simplicity, lower costs and consistent returns over time. However, it's essential to remember that no one-size-fits-all solution exists in investing. Your financial goals, risk tolerance and investment horizon should guide your decision between the two. Armed with this knowledge, you're now better equipped to choose a strategy that aligns with your wealth-building plan. While index funds aim to mirror the performance of a specific market index, 
you should be aware of potential tracking errors which occur when the fund's performance performance deviates from that of the index it's trying to replicate. This deviation can be a result of various factors, such as the fund manager's decisions, transaction costs, or the inability to perfectly mimic the index due to its size or complexity. Tracking errors aren't necessarily detrimental, but they're an important metric to evaluate because they can impact your investment's return. They're usually expressed as a standard deviation percentage, which illustrates the volatility of the fund's returns in relation to the index. The lower this number, the better the fund's performance matches the index. It's essential to understand that while index funds aim for minimal tracking error, achieving a perfect match is nearly impossible. There will always be some level of discrepancy due to the aforementioned factors. Your goal should be to select funds with consistently low tracking errors, as this indicates the fund is effectively replicating the index's performance. Remember that a larger tracking error doesn't automatically mean a poorer investment. It could indicate the fund is outperforming the index, but it could also mean it's underperforming. As a result, tracking errors should be evaluated alongside other performance metrics for a thorough understanding of an index fund's success. Stay vigilant and informed about potential tracking errors in your chosen index funds. By doing so, you'll be better equipped to make informed decisions and effectively manage your investment portfolio. Part 8. Evaluating Fund Costs In addition to tracking errors, another key factor to contemplate when choosing an index fund is the cost associated with the fund. Costs can notably impact your overall returns, so it's essential to understand and evaluate them thoroughly. Firstly, there's the expense ratio, which is the annual fee that all funds charge their shareholders. This ratio reflects the costs of running the fund. For index funds, you'll typically find lower expense ratios because they're passively managed. However, it's not always the case. So, keep a keen eye out for funds with low expense ratios. Then, you've got transaction costs, which aren't included in the expense ratio, Index funds usually have lower transaction costs as they trade less frequently than actively managed funds. But remember, even small transaction fees can add up over time, eating into your profits. In certain cases, you might also come across load fees. These are sales charges or commissions that you either pay when you buy the fund front-end load or when you sell it back-end load. Ideally, you'd want an index fund with no load fees. Lastly, don't forget about the potential tax costs. Some index funds can generate considerable taxable capital gains that can affect your net returns. Beyond the fund's costs, choosing the right broker is another significant step in your journey to access riches with index funds. It's not simply about picking the one with the lowest fees, but rather, it's about selecting a broker who understands your financial goals and is capable of guiding you towards them all while providing ideal service. When choosing a broker, consider their reputation in the industry. Look for ratings and reviews from reliable sources. A broker with a high rating and positive reviews is more likely to be reliable, trustworthy and competent. Nonetheless, don't rely solely on these. It's also important to evaluate their actual performance and track record. Another vital factor is the broker's access to different index funds. Ideally, you want a broker who will provide you with a wide array of options so you can diversify your investments. This diversity increases your chances of generating higher returns and mitigates the risk of loss. Moreover, assess the broker's customer service. You'll need a broker who's responsive, knowledgeable and patient enough to explain complex financial concepts in simple terms. This way, you'll have a better understanding of your investments and can make informed decisions. Lastly, consider the broker's fee structure. While it's important to minimize costs, don't let low fees be the sole determinant. Remember, a broker's value isn't just about costs, but also about the quality of service they provide. Part 9. Setting Financial Goals After choosing your broker, it's time to buckle down and set your financial goals a critical step in revealing the potential of index funds. Clear goals form the backbone of your financial plan, influencing how you allocate your assets and what index funds you choose. Firstly, identify your financial aspirations. 
They could be short-term, like saving for a holiday, medium-term, such as buying a house, or long-term, like planning for retirement. Be specific with your goals. Instead of saying, I want to save money, say, I want to save $10,000 in two years, the more precise you are, the easier it'll be to track your progress. Secondly, prioritize your goals. If you're juggling multiple objectives, you need to decide which ones are most important. This determination can be based on urgency or personal preference. For instance, if you're saving for a down payment in retirement, you might prioritize the down payment because it's a more immediate need. Thirdly, make your goals realistic. It's great to shoot for the stars, but make sure your goals are achievable with your income and lifestyle. If your goal seems too ambitious, break it down into smaller, more manageable targets. Lastly, make certain your goals are flexible. Life is unpredictable and circumstances can change. Your financial goals should be able to adapt to these changes. Whether it's a job loss, an unexpected expense, or a market downturn, your goals should be resilient enough to weather these storms. Crafting a sensible budget plan is your next essential step, as it's a financial roadmap that guides you on how to allocate your income towards your prioritized goals and the index fund's investment. To start with, you'll need to note down all your sources of income and total them up. This total income forms the backbone of your budget plan. Next, you'll need to identify your fixed and variable expenses. Fixed expenses are those you can't easily change, like mortgage payments or car loans. Variable expenses, on the other hand, can fluctuate from month to month, such as grocery bills or entertainment costs. Summing up these expenses gives you a clear picture of your total outflow. Now, with the total income and total expenses in hand, it's time to do the math. By subtracting your expenses from your income, you'll determine your disposable income. This is the money available for investing in index funds. At this point, allocate a specific percentage of your disposable income towards your index fund's investment. This percentage isn't fixed and can vary based on your risk tolerance, financial goals and time frame. Remember, investing in index funds is a long-term game, so the more you can put away and the earlier you start, the better. Lastly, review your budget plan regularly. Your financial situation may change over time, and so should your budget. Regular reviews help guarantee you're still on track towards achieving your financial goals and mastering index funds. Part 10. Emergency Fund Essentials While meticulously planning your budget for index funds, it's equally important to not overlook the significance of an emergency fund in your financial portfolio. An emergency fund serves as a financial safety net designed to cover unexpected expenses like medical bills, car repairs, or sudden job loss. It's your first line of defense against financial crises. Now, you might be wondering, how much should I set aside for emergencies? Well, a common rule of thumb is to have three to six months worth of living expenses. This amount may seem intimidating, but don't let it discourage you. You can start small and gradually build it up. To do this, you need to incorporate your emergency fund into your monthly budget. Allocate a portion of your income, no matter how small, and consistently deposit it into a separate savings account. Treat this as a non-negotiable expense, just like your rent or grocery bills. Moreover, it's essential to keep your emergency fund easily accessible, but not so accessible that you'd be tempted to dip into it for non-emergencies. Consider a high-yield savings account or a money market account. These options offer higher interest rates than regular savings accounts, allowing your money to grow over time. Lastly, remember that an emergency fund isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. It provides you with financial stability and peace of mind, enabling you to take calculated risks in your journey to index funds mastery. After all, the path to wealth isn't just about earning more, it's also about protecting what you've earned. A staggering majority of people underestimate the importance of planning for retirement, yet it's an integral part of your financial journey that deserves as much attention as your index fund investments. The reality is, the sooner you start, the better off you'll be. Retirement planning isn't just about stashing away money for the future, it's about understanding how your savings can generate income for you when you're no longer working. 
First, let's analyze the 401k retirement plan, a popular employer-sponsored investment vehicle. When you contribute to a 401k, you're not just saving money, you're investing it. Typically, you'll have the option to invest these funds in a selection of mutual funds, which may include index funds. This allows your savings to grow tax-deferred, meaning you won't pay taxes on the money until you withdraw it. Next, consider the Individual Retirement Account IRA, another powerful retirement planning tool. With an IRA, you can contribute pre-tax dollars, meaning your contributions can reduce your taxable income. This can translate into immediate tax savings, making the IRA a compelling option. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world as Einstein reputedly called it. Starting early and investing consistently can result in exponential growth over time due to compound interest. It's not just about the amount you save, but how long you save it. Part 11. Real Estate Investment Options Diving into the domain of real estate investments, you'll find a plethora of options that offer the potential for substantial financial growth. Your choice of investment will heavily depend on your financial goals, risk tolerance, and time commitment. Residential properties are a common starting point. They involve leasing homes, apartments, townhouses, or other dwellings to tenants. The main source of income here is from rent, which can provide a steady cash flow. Next, you'll find commercial properties, typically offices or retail spaces. These investments usually demand a higher initial capital but offer a more secure income due to longer lease agreements. You're also less likely to have vacancies as businesses, unlike individuals, rarely move. If you're not interested in direct ownership, real estate investment trusts REITs might be your best bet. These companies own, operate or finance income generating real estate and you can buy shares of these trusts on the stock market. This option provides liquidity and eliminates the hassle of property management. Another option is real estate crowdfunding platforms where you can invest in properties with others, reducing the amount you need to outlay. It's a flexible way to invest and allows for diversification. Last but not least, you can explore real estate mutual funds, which invest in stocks issued by real estate companies. This offers a good balance between risk and return. Each option has its pros and cons, so it's crucial to do thorough research and possibly consult with a professional before venturing into real estate investments. To maximize your returns in real estate, you've got to master the art of reading market trends. They're the heartbeat and pulse of the investment world. Market trends indicate the direction in which the market is moving and can help you make informed investment decisions. Understanding market trends isn't just about observing price changes. It's about understanding the factors that drive these changes. You've got to be aware of the different types of trends, uptrends, uptrend, downtrend and sideways or horizontal trends. An uptrend is characterized by higher highs and higher lows in market prices. A downtrend, on the other hand, is characterized by lower highs and lower lows. A sideways trend means the market isn't making significant moves up or down. You should also know how to identify these trends. Graphs and charts are popular tools for this. In an uptrend, the chart looks like it's climbing the stairs from left to right. In a downtrend, it's like descending the stairs. A sideways trend appears as a flat horizontal line. Market trends are also influenced by market cycles, which are periods of significant upturn or downturn in markets. Being aware of where the market is in its cycle can help you anticipate potential trend changes. Mastering market trends requires patience, diligence, and a keen eye for detail. It's not about making quick decisions, but rather about making informed ones. As you gain expertise in reading and understanding market trends, you'll be better equipped to make decisions that can optimize your investment returns. Part 12. Economic Indicators Overview Understanding economic indicators is essential for you as these signals can reveal the economy's overall health and provide insight into potential market trends. Economic indicators are statistical data that represent economic activities or conditions. They're used to gauge the overall state of the economy and they're important for your investment strategies as they can predict market movements. There are three types of economic indicators leading, lagging and coincident. 
trading indicators predict future economic activity. They include stock market performance, building permits for new private housing units, and manufacturers' new orders for consumer goods. When you see these indicators trending upwards, it's often a sign that the economy is about to improve, which can spur growth in stock prices. Lagging indicators, on the other hand, confirm long-term trends but only after they've happened. Examples are the unemployment rate, corporate profits, and labor cost per unit of output. These indicators are valuable in confirming that a pattern is occurring. Lastly, coincident indicators change at the same time as the economy, providing information about the current state of the economy. Examples include employees on non-agricultural payrolls, personal income less transfer payments, and industrial production and manufacturing trade sales. Let's explore the fascinating domain of investment psychology, a significant field that examines how human emotions and biases can considerably influence your investing decisions. It's important to understand this aspect of investing to master index funds wisely, effectively, and profitably. Firstly, consider the aspect of loss aversion. It's a psychological principle showing that people feel the pain of losing more than the pleasure of gaining. It can lead you to hold on to losing investments for too long, hoping they'll rebound. On the flip side, it can make you sell winning investments too early, out of fear they'll drop. To counter this, it's necessary to set clear investment goals and stick to them, regardless of short-term market fluctuations. Secondly, there's confirmation bias. This is when you seek out information that supports your pre-existing beliefs and ignore contradictory evidence. It can blind you to potential risks or better investment opportunities. To combat this, you must work for objectivity, regularly reviewing your investment decisions and being open to criticism and differing viewpoints. Lastly, consider overconfidence bias. This is when you overestimate your knowledge or abilities, leading you to take on more risk than you can handle. It's a common pitfall for novice investors. Always remember, humility is crucial in investing. No one can predict the market with absolute certainty. Part 13. Continuous learning and improvement. After taking note of these psychological biases in investing, you should focus on continual learning and improvement to better manage your index funds. Mastery over index funds isn't achieved overnight, it's a journey that requires commitment and continuous enhancement of your knowledge and skills. One way to foster continuous learning is by staying updated with market trends and economic indicators. These can give you insights into how different elements affect the performance of your index funds. Reading financial reports, attending webinars, and participating in financial forums can enrich your knowledge base, allowing you to make informed decisions. Furthermore, you should always be open to constructive criticism and feedback. Often, an outsider's perspective can shed new light on your strategies and help you spot potential pitfalls. Embrace these opportunities to refine your investment tactics. Moreover, consider the role of technology in furthering your learning. Various platforms offer financial courses and tools that can help you analyze your fund's performance, performance, understand market trends, and predict future outcomes. Utilizing these can aid you in mastering the art of index fund investing. Additionally, keep a close eye on your portfolio and review it periodically. This practice helps you understand how your decisions affect your fund's performance and allows you to adjust your strategies accordingly. You've reached the end of this financial journey. Did you know, according to the SP Indices versus Active Spiva scorecard, over 90% of active fund managers fail to beat index funds over a 10-year period? That's a game-changer, isn't it? This reinforces the wisdom of mastering index funds. Continue learning, stay informed about market trends and economic indicators, and keep refining your investment strategies. Remember, your financial future is in your hands. Thanks for listening.